Hi friends, final seminar number three. Let's go. Reason why you love vinyl? One minute. Oh, vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I find the analog sound sounds cliche, but it just sounds more analog, more live when you are playing through it. It's basically it. Bernard, why you sound more natural than digital recordings? Thank you. Uh, Bob, um, I went into vinyl is because I find that uh, vinyl recordings are most natural, in my opinion. Uh, I started off with digital initially, but I uh, realized that uh, no matter how I try to improve the system and uh, components, somehow it still doesn't match the quality of the vinyl. Thank you very much. Uh, Johari? Hi everyone, uh, I'm Johari. Uh, basically, I started off listening to vinyl way back in the 70s when I was still in secondary school. So, in fact, I didn't leave it. You know, when the digital era came about, we tried so somehow or other, I think, yeah, it's good, you know, good point about digital. But then again, I play both media, by the way. Uh, I still play most of my music via vinyl, because I find that, as many of you have already seen, vinyl actually sounds much more natural. So I believe I share the same opinion with everybody here. Thank you, Johan. Clarity of the sound, and also the artwork, mm. and uh, I like to compare the sound and I like the instruments in the vinyl because you can hear the very details of it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And John? Yeah, in my case, uh, I don't think one minute. Uh, I came into uh, vinyl because my son uh, started to listen to it and uh, that's where I uh, get into the, uh, the, the, the listening to uh, records. Uh, the, the very simple reason. Uh, I thought I wouldn't be able to listen uh, from uh, digital music and uh, analog sound. But I, uh, I stand to be corrected. I think if you listen to it a little bit carefully, I think you will probably be able to listen. Yeah, that's how I got into uh, records. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> For this couple of years, I've been like looking around. But because of this lady, which I got the second time, she got me poisoned. Because uh, she played a vinyl and uh, the sound was lovely. So um, the music just went to my mind for the whole day. <laughs> so the next day, I went to buy a vinyl record without a turntable. And the third day, I, I got a turntable. So <laughs> yeah, that's how my story goes. You got up here. <laughs> you got up here, okay. Yeah, Thank you very much. Oh. General consensus is missing out of that. Originals or reissue. There are some uh, first pressing originals which are better than reissues. Then there are reissues that are better than the first pressings. And then there are reissues that are better than reissues. So let's get that out of the way. We will start first. Better than we should have given the or killer man. This was in 1970 when it first came out on the full pink Martin Garden table. Then they thought you could compare to a 1980 and US one for the issue. We issue better than the first. Let's end. Let's end is a UK band, if you don't already know. But interestingly, the US presses sound better than the UK one. Because they are and we issue something better than we issue that side of the moon. Two O three versus two O one one. The two O three significantly better than two O one. But don't take our word for it. Why? If you have the chance, go listen to it. When we talk about which one is better and all that, we say uh, to appreciate the how, we first need to know the why. So now let's go into the why. So there are a couple of reasons why batching sound different. Uh, we roughly uh, shifted it to six different categories. So the first one is materials. What material is that vinyl press on? Is it a uh, virgin vinyl or is it a uh, recycled one? Secondly, source. Uh, is it from a higher generation thing? Or is it from a digital source? For example, that's a uh, moon. Was it recorded in mono? Was it recorded for stereo? Was it mixed in mono? Was it mixed in stereo? Was it a whole Different pressing times were that different. Uh, Famous mastering engineers 
more uh, fixed edges. You can have the lacquer, which is a very soft piece. You should say that it's the same sound fidelity as when it was first cut to lacquer. So that's the first thing, what's the source? The second thing is the lathe, the cutting machine. So when you cut from the, 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 the saw, assuming that you are still using the high fidelity on the head, how are you actually cutting? Are you using the same head that the original guy used? Or are you using the same pressing bar? Uh, and it's usually the first commercially available pressing. Uh, and this is important because uh, you will see later, I'll cover, that they are pressings that they're not for sale and, and those are well of course more expensive but um, yeah for, for all intents and purposes the first pressing refers to the first commercially available uh, pressings the one you get is uh, the not promo pressings uh, and they, you need to be able to identify them many people you know around uh, the vinyl sphere agree on is that uh, it is within the same production run as the first pressings that means there wasn't uh, uh, the production run wasn't stopped. Okay, so for example, in Dark Sub, it would be anything from A to B2, which is the first pressing, up to A10, B10, um, which is the 10th sample for both sides. Those are considered original pressing and they use the same master, uh, same blades, uh, same mothers, and, and everything except the samples are different. They only use higher generation samples and um, they're usually pressed within the first year or first few years of the release of the album. But they can, they can, if, if they're done very well. Uh, for example, uh, to, to mention the example earlier, the 2003 remaster, of course it's 2016 now, but back in 2003, it did actually sound better than a lot of the, a lot of the copies that were available, even the original, because it was new. It was mastered very well, pure and a lot, uh, by Dark Sex. And, and Many, many people think that it sounds excellent for a fraction of the price. Uh, not only that, uh, you're getting something that's in mint condition. No pops, no crackles, brand new. And it was, well, readily available compared to the, the, the original UK pressings or US pressings. So that was a very viable option back then. However, right now, if you go to store, what you're going to find is the 2011 issue. Here is again dark side of the moon. This is the Mopai uh, one, that is sound apps. Uh, and, and this is the sample record. It's a test pressing that's distributed, circulated within the record company uh, to ensure that the QC is there. So usually they don't press more than 10 pieces of this. Not more than 10 pieces, right? And you're talking about dark side of the moon that's pressed in the millions. So yeah, uh, don't bother. <laughs> don't bother. Don't bother. But of course, if you can find money, you can like that. So the 
think the word appeared. So you see here is do not reference, here is do not reference ink. And when the ink came out, registered also uh, came out. So there's a little R here.